Julius Nyerere went from a humble beginning to gaining independence for Tanzania in a more peaceful manner. He showed great courage to engage in a fierce battle that ended the brutal dictatorship of General Idi Amin in Uganda. This is a story of humility, intellect and courage. My name is Bernard and this is African Dream Motivation. Let's get into it. Julius Nyerere was born on 13th April 1922 in Witongo, in the village of Butiama in Tangayike's Mara region. He was part of the 25 children born to the chief of Zanika people. His father, Burito Nyerere, had 22 wives of which Julius' mother was the fifth. They were farmers and while growing up, he lived in his mother's house, assisting her in farming millet, maize and cassava. He was exposed to purely African-administered power and authority, which further on shaped his ideology of leadership. With his father being a chief, he was fortunate to assess formal education since the British colonial administration took a keen interest in educating the wars of traditional leaders. This was a strategy they had adopted in shaping the chieftaincy system in the country. With the main goal of educating potential heirs to embrace the British style of governance. On his father's approval, Inyerere began his education in February 1934 at the Native Administrative School in Wisenge, Musoma, about 35 kilometers from home. But due to his determination, he persevered and covered the distance to acquire knowledge. This opportunity made him a highly reputable person since most of his peers could not afford primary education. He grabbed the opportunity with both hands and strived to be the best in school. His hard work paid off and his performance was outstanding. After six months, his results allowed him to skip a grade. Gilos was a different child at school and his devotion to his studies was unique. During his free time, he preferred to read in his dormitory and increase his scope of knowledge. In 1936, his elementary school ended and his final exam results were the highest in the Lake Province and Western Province region. As the saying goes, hard work puts you where good luck can find you. His academic excellence presented him with an opportunity of a lifetime. He gained a government scholarship to attend the elite Tabora Government School, which was a secondary school in Tabora. During these times, Arranged marriages were the order of the day, and Inyerere's case was no exception. While he was busy studying at school, his father selected a wife for him who was only three to four years old. In March 1942, while he was in his final year, his father died. Even though he really wanted to attend the funeral, his school refused to allow him to go home. In his absence, his brother, Edward Wazingi Inyerere, was appointed as his father's successor. He later decided to be baptized as a Roman Catholic and he took the name Julius. Climbing the academic ladder, he completed his secondary education in October 1941, but that was not the end of the road. He decided to study in the Makerere College in Kampala, Uganda. His high performance helped him to secure a bursary to find a teacher training course in the college which he started in January 1943. In the same year, he, together with two other visionary students, founded the Tangaika African Welfare Association with the aim of assisting a small number of Tangaikan students at Makerere. The association eventually died off, but he went on to revive another one named Tangaika African Association, which also ceased operations by 1947. His experience in college was very crucial in shaping him into the man the world knows him for today. After three years, he graduated with a diploma in education. He left Uganda and returned to his village, Zanika, where he built a house for his widowed mother and then later on spent his time reading and farming in Butiama. He entered a field of teaching after he was offered a teaching position in both state-run Tabora Boys School and Mission Run St. Mary School, where he chose the latter, despite its lower wages. The progress of his people was always at heart, 
and while he was teaching at St. Mary's School, he gave free lessons in English to older locals outside school hours. His intellect allowed him to give political talks on salient issues. He also worked briefly as a price inspector for the government, where he went into shop to monitor the prices of commodities. He later quit this job when he realized that most of his recent reports about false pricing were disregarded by the authorities. With marriage coming to the scene, he disregarded the arranged marriage that was being forced on him by his late father. By 1948, he began courting Maria Gabriel, a teacher and a Catholic. They were informally engaged in 1948. Julius Nyerere still had his eyes on higher education. In April 1949, he embarked on a journey from Dar es Salaam to Southampton, England. He started his studies at the University of Edinburgh, where he began a short course in chemistry and physics. He also passed higher English in Scottish University's preliminary examination. He arrived back in Dar es Salaam in October 1952, and his political journey was just about to begin. Upon his return, he built a mad brick house for himself and his fiancée Maria in the year 1953. They got married on 24th January. Soon after their marriage, they moved to Pugu, closer to Dar el Salaam. His academic achievement attracted so many top-class colleges, and in no time, he was hired to teach history at St. Francis College, which was one of the leading schools for indigenous Africans in Tangaika. In the same year, they welcomed their first child, Andrews. Inyerere was elected the president of Tangaika African Association in April 1953. He became a strong political force, pushing for the independence of Tangaika from the British Empire. He gained popularity and his ideologies attracted many Tangaikans. On 7 July 1954, he was assisted by Tambona to transform the Tangaikan African Association into a new political party named Tangaika African National Union. He had great admiration for Mahatma Gandhi, the Indian independence hero, and endorsed Gandhi's approach to attaining independence through non-violent protest. By the late 1950s, Tangaika African National Union gained popularity throughout the country growing from 100,000 members in 1995 to 500,000 members by 1957. Its quest for independence was now recognized by both nationals and international superpowers. This was a great threat to the British colonial governor of Tangaika, Edward Twinning. Edward disliked Inyerere and regarded him as a racialist who wanted to impose indigenous domination over European and South Asian minorities. In order to silence Inyerere's domination, Edward Twining established the United Tangaika Party to combat Inyerere's party. But no matter how hard he tried to suppress them, they grew in numbers and in confidence. In March 1959, a new British governor of Tangaika, in the person of Richard Turnbull, was chosen. Upon his assumption of duty, he gave the Tangaika African National Union five of the 12 ministerial posts available in the colony's government. In Herrera's bloodless transition of Tangaika from colonial rule to independence was in view and gradually his dreams were materializing. On 9 December 1961, Tangaika became an independent state and exactly a year after, it became a republic. An interim constitution presented Nyerere as the country's president, with Karumi as its vice president. In August, it became necessary for the independent state to find a new name. The government launched a petition in a quest to find a suitable name for the country. After two months, it was later announced that the winning proposal was United Republic of Tanzania. A great future lied ahead of the country. Julius Inyerere was always pushing for unity between African nations to the extent that he was willing to delay the independence of Tanzania 
just to ensure that other African countries were also free so that together they could push the continent forward. In January 1971, Africa was shocked by the bloody coup d'etat led by Idi Amin in Uganda, overthrowing President Obote. Numerous heads of state across the continent of Africa and the world at large expressed their disappointment and refused to recognize Idi Amin as the president of Uganda. Julius Inyerere offered Obote refuge in Tanzania. He introduced a form of home guard security to improve the Tanzanian military base. He called it the People's Militia. He pronounced Idi Amin a racist after he expelled about 50,000 Ugandan Asians from his country in 1972. Idi Amin launched a couple of attacks on Tanzania as retaliation for Inyerere declaring publicly his support for the former president Obote. In 1971, Idi Amin led a military exercise that resulted in the bombing of the Kagera sawmill in Tanzania. This didn't end. In 1972, he bombed the Bokoba and Nwanza region. This was a heated military power exchange between the two nations of the East. In October 1978, Uganda invaded Tanzania and this was time for a counter-attack. Inyerere mounted an attack not only to push the Ugandan army back but to end the regime of General Idi Amin. He mobilized tens of thousands of civilian soldiers to strengthen the regular army. In the following months, President Nyerere's army pushed Uganda's forces out of Tanzania and pursued them into their own territory. After serious battle exchanges, they defeated them by taking control of their capital, Kampala. This marked the end of Idi Amin's regime. Inyerere handed over power back to the people of Uganda and after a full power change, the 1980 general election saw Obote once again president of Uganda. The civilian president in Nyerere won the battle against the military brutal dictator Idi Amin. In the 1985 general election in Tanzania, President Inyerere did something many African leaders will never do, which is resigning from the presidency voluntarily while having the chance to win power once more. He announced his successor and supported his candidature. Ali Hassan Inwinyi succeeded President Inyerere and won the election to become president in 1985. This act of selflessness brought much respect internationally for Inyerere. A.B. Asenso, professor of liberal studies, described him as one of the few African leaders to have voluntarily, gracefully, and honorably bowed out of government. In 1998, his health began deteriorating after he was diagnosed of terminal leukemia. He kept it out of public domain and was receiving medical treatment regularly. In September 1999, he traveled to England for medical care and was hospitalized in St. Thomas Hospital, London. By October, he was placed in intensive care after he had a major stroke. Unfortunately, he died later on 14th October 1999 with his wife and six children around him. Benjamin Kopa, the then president of Tanzania, announced his death on national television and a 30-day mourning was observed in honor of the noble leader. His funeral was held at a national stadium and was attended by hundreds of thousands of people. His body was flown to Butiama and buried. Julius Inyerere displayed selflessness at the highest level, making him one of the greatest African leaders who ever lived. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. This has been Bernard and you've been watching African Dream Motivation. Kindly subscribe for more.